So welcome back to another episode. Welcome back to another Vic. It's great to have you here <laughs> on such a very special day. Auspicious. It's incredible. This day, 20 years ago, a certain game came out that changed the industry, Metal Gear Solid. Crazy. And I got to ask you, yeah. where were you 20 years ago when this game came out? I was reviewing the game for Electric Playground and uh, and uh, our Reviews on the Run program. It was a segment in EP at that point, but... Um, interestingly enough, at E3 1997 in uh, Atlanta was the first time that I met Hideo Kojima, yeah. and we had a nice long conversation about what his game was going to be about, and they had models dressed up as all the characters on the floor in Atlanta, and it just looked incredible. And I actually worked with Konami. They were going to be a big partner of our show, a big sponsor partner for our show. Uh, and it was just this great sort of integration and sort of getting to know uh, the world of Metal Gear Solid. And it's amazing. You got, could go walk up to Kojima back then. It was yep. not a big deal, you know. There's not a whole bunch of PR people. He's probably just like, hey, great, I get to talk about my game. Because he thought, yeah. here's the thing, he thought the game would not be successful. Yes. Did you know that? Which is absolutely ridiculous. It sold millions. Yes. It sold more in America than it did in Japan well, it was at such, the time. It was such a story-based video game, and yes. I think he was kind of nervous about putting that out into the world. There weren't a lot of games that you could point to that were like Metal Gear Solid. And, no. And yeah. so I, I think any time you're sort of groundbreaking like that, you are a little bit nervous. Yeah, it really was one of those games that the hype was there. I remember yeah. looking in like EGM magazine, and they were showing Kojima building levels out of Lego. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, they're really thinking about this. And it was fully 3D. Obviously, all the rest were in 2, uh, 2D yeah. overhead yeah. back in the day. Yeah. It came out on the MXX2 in Japan, and then we got some weird ports of it on the NES. The original games. Yes, the original games. But Metal Gear Solid was Metal a Gear 3D Solid. for the PlayStation. PlayStation 1, Beginning Absolutely. the relationship that Kojima has had and continues to have with Sony and the PlayStation brand, and they're, they're well, obviously... They did. He did. He has now. Yeah. Well, since he's left Konami, things have gone a little bit sour with them. But. Yeah, but he, he, right from the get-go, I mean, uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 was a, uh, an exclusive on the PlayStation 3, and he's had a, a really tight relationship. I mean, it, it really helped to build his career. Oh, and yes. now, of course, Sony is uh, is publishing his new game, which yeah, is Death, great. Death Stranding, yes. which is looking crazy. Yeah, uh, and I'm Part looking for forward. The course. Yeah, but can you remember the very first time you played Metal Gear Solid? Yeah. I mean, I played it, and I was like, this is incredible because it's not just about gun, run and gun. No. I was trying to do that at first and getting killed, yeah. and then I was like, oh, you know, it's about sneaking around, hiding in a box, and that was that was really kind of different and new at the time. Well, and listening to the incredible voice actors as well, oh and the performances like from David Hayter and, and the rest of the crew in there, uh, and the boss fights too, like with Sniper Wolf and oh. Psycho Mantis. And remember, Psycho Mantis made you want to, you had to switch the controller yeah, to the Yeah, you put the control too. on the ground. I remember yeah. going, what? I have to put the control on the ground? And I did it. And I, I was thinking about it last night. I bet yeah. everybody did. Yeah. Everybody's sitting there in their living rooms, and he says, put the control on the ground. You're like, what? Yeah. It's just vibrating. It's, it's wow. such that was neat. What a great Fourth wall breaking stuff from Hideo Kojima. It really, who really was. understood that the medium of games could be way more than they had been. He really got it. He really knew, especially coming off of CD-ROM and all the storage that was there and all the requirements needed to create 3D models and 3D characters and 3D environments. And he just did all kinds of funky, crazy things. And that continued with 2, where oh, he yes. did the whole switch around and, and basically ripped Solid Snake away from us. And then with 3, <laughs> right, and, where we're yeah. Naked Snake and we're doing this whole prequel thing. 3 is still my favorite My favorite in the city. Is so three, good yeah. by far. Peace Walker is incredible too. Oh though. yeah! So yeah. really, realistically, he created a cinematic universe yep. for video games that had not been done like that yes. at that time. And I think that started with Snatcher and Police Knots, yep. which were these like text adventure style of games, interactive games, which which were menu based. Those were great, but it paved the way for what he really wanted to do, and he wanted to revisit Metal Gear as Metal Gear Solid, and he knocked it out of the park. I mean, all the voice actors, as you talked about, yeah. David Hayter is a great friend of yours. Yeah. What does he say about the series? Is he proud of being a part of the series now? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of it was interpretive for him, too, because there was so much new at the beginning stages of Metal Gear Solid. Uh, he was getting these massive scripts, as you can imagine, that had been translated <laughs> yeah. somewhat roughly, you know, because everybody Especially was Especially that time, Yeah, everybody right? was new to the whole experience. So he would sort of y intuit some stuff and, and alter some of the dialogue to kind of make it feel a little bit more organic for him. He came up with that gravelly voice. I remember we visited his house to interview him back in, I think, 98, 99. Wow. He, it was, he, was work he had done Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid 2 wasn't out yet. 
Uh, and he'd also worked on X-Men. And so he was in this very interesting place. Very interesting place. And Neil Patrick Harris was on his lawn waiting for him <laughs> to go and hang out with him. Him and his his buds were all ready to go out and do something. That is so and, amazing. And David Hayter said, no, no, i got to do this interview with these Canadian people here first. And so we, <laughs> we did the interview. It was uh, Zoe Flower did the interview with him. He was just a sweet guy. And oh, I've yeah. kept in touch with him over the years. Totally amazing person. And and for sure, what an iconic role of yeah. Snake, yes. which was based in Snake Plissken. Yeah. And you want to know something interesting. I'm sure you probably know this. Yeah. But they based his character look on Christopher Walken. Right. Dude, that's so Christopher crazy. Walken. Christopher that's, Walken. That's me. <laughs> Solid Snake. <laughs> what the heck's going well, on Well, you right know, there? Kojima, it makes no bones about it. He wants to be a filmmaker, but he's using the medium of vi uh, video games to do that. and In we, an interactive way, which I think is even better. I think so, too. Yeah. And I think he's starting... I mean, He's come out, I remember at uh, one of the G-Foria Awards, or I think where he's getting a Lifetime Achievement Award, at, he came out and he said, I'm almost 50 or something like that, or I've been doing this for a long time. I'm never going to stop making video games. I think he has completely recognized the importance of his position, yes. and he really loves it. But he really cracks a whip with the people that he works with. You know, we worked on the making of Metal Gear Solid 4. <laughs> yeah, it's the Blu-ray for anybody out there. So yeah. in, the, in that box set, the Blu-ray was done by Vic. Yeah, it was incredible. And my team. It of was course. It nearly killed us. It was so much work. Because you guys went to high-definition cameras at the time, which was like a big deal. Well, we were shooting an HD. But we, uh, Kojima and his group and, and his producer Ken and, and all the people that we work with and Ryan Payton, uh, who's a tremendous friend and an awesome guy, uh, we, we all of us wanted to do something really special with this. So we did like an eight chapter d deep dive and we did stuff. We shot some in Washington, D.C. We went to Ryan Payton's family home in uh, Oregon. I love those segments were the best in the documentary. It was great. And we did it a whole so thing. It was so human. It was yeah. so real. Yeah. yeah. That's what I wanted to show, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I really got a sense when we were in Tokyo at Kojima Productions, just their uncompromising sort of effort to build something remarkable. And four, if you can remember on the PlayStation 3, was like mind-blowingly beautiful. At that time, it was, it was so never, cool. It still holds up really, yeah. really well. Yes. What were your thoughts on Kojima as a creator pretty intense I hear yeah he is intense and and um, he I think he puts a little bit of fear into people when when they're working with him because he has some pretty high standards he's been able, of what he wants yeah, yeah and he's been able to hit some really big highs yeah, yeah. you know in, in the medium you know most of the time with Metacritic scores or what have you but also just culturally and creatively he's got a you know, a cachet that Sony completely understood and said, okay, we don't know what you're making, but here's all the money you need to make He's it. He's got a know? drive to keep going. Yeah, and uh, all of his his comrades, all of the people that he works with, like uh, Yuji Shinkara and uh, and Ken. Who's the amazing, producer, they're, yeah. they're all phenomenal. Unbelievable. Yeah, and so, like, I, it, it's hard not to be a little intimidated with Kojima-san because he, he is... Stern-faced. He's very focused, yeah, yeah. but he, he, is, he, he is playful as well, and he's goofy. Yeah. Uh, when I shot one of the interviews for the docs, he said, look, I look like a Korean pop star today because his hair was all done and his makeup was done. And <laughs> that's he, fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he was cool. Have a bit of fun. But honestly, look at the body of work that this well, man Well, then that's what's crafted. left. Like, yeah. like, it's so funny when I play the original Metal Gear Solid. No. Yeah. I got a huge collection of Metal Gear games now. And yeah. That all started from the first game because the first game was, was so successful. Yeah. It's so iconic. And it's 20 years ago. Yes. It's just amazing that 20 years ago, but I remember just playing in my parents' basement. Yeah. And here we are 20 Dude, years ago. I, I, I remember later. seeing it early and not knowing what the hell I was in store for, you know, right. and meeting Kojima and, and not knowing what his role and how prominent he was going to be in this industry and how important he is in, oh, the, in this industry. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You know? And that eventually he would leave Konami yes. and Metal Gear would be put into disarray. Like, we don't know where that is now. We don't yeah. know if we even want to revisit it without him. I think, he is still the head of that. I think that's, that exists as a pretty big crown jewel in Konami's uh, crown. Yeah. I, I think there is a possibility that uh, could, Konami could sell it to Sony yeah. and Sony would hire Kojima's team again to build another Metal Gear thing. I, I think that is in the realm of possibilities, but I also believe that Konami could hire uh, a developer or development team that is really gung-ho to try to show what they can do with the Metal Gear franchise. Do you remember the review that you gave it back in 1997? Oh, I'm sure I gave it a 10. I'm sure yeah. in 98. I, mean, I, I, I remember Remember, Tommy and I were just completely dumbfounded at how awesome it was. Yeah, like how ambitious it was. And I'll tell you this: I didn't get the retail box. I got the development kit uh, version of the game. No. Yes, and wow. they only sent me one of the two discs to uh, check what? out the game. 
before we started to pl- before we uh, spoilers was that like- I think they were talking a little bit about spoilers and they didn't want like to get in leaked exactly right and then they sent the retail code later on but they gave us a nice taste of what was to come and I remember both Tommy and I just being like holy you shit, can't this believe is another like another level it really was and you look back in the graphics now for anybody who's watching you go yeah. oh well, you know it's very old but at that time this yes. is why we're doing this at 20 years ago it was groundbreaking you'd never seen graphics like this gameplay like this yeah. storytelling like this which was a very mature story Storyline at the time, he you know, they smoking took, cigarettes. Smoking and, cigarettes. Yeah. Uh, it, it took Talking place. Talking about in, the PTSD that he was kind of going through. Yeah, there's yeah. all these conversations. It was uh, in Alaska, in this island in Alaska yeah. called Shadow Moses. Talk about yeah, a crazy. game that deserves that Shadow of the Colossus type of re- love in a remastered edition. Wouldn't that I, be incredible? Well, remember there was the Twin Snakes on Nintendo, the, and I think there was some legal problems there with, Dan- so, uh, with um, uh, Silicon Knights right. and Dennis. And I, I think they did a great job. With they that, did a great though. job. Yeah. Uh, for sure, but it wasn't that original game. I just wanted no. that original game remastered. Yep. And who knows? Maybe they're working on it behind the scenes. I don't know. If I was Konami, I would. And I would also make sure that this game is on the PlayStation Mini console that's coming out pretty soon, too. Anything, yeah. You know? I mean, this is a game to be celebrated forever. It changed our business. It did, absolutely. And we just want to talk a little bit about it today. Let us all know what you think of Metal Gear Solid, that very first game. What were your experiences with it? Did it, like, change your life? It changed mine. Yep. But it changed the industry. It changed my life, too. It did, absolutely. So, anyways, guys, until next time.